Welcome to Bandwagon Fans. I'm Jeff. Jason here. And tonight we are joined by our friend Waylon. And tonight we are going to be counting down our top, actually all 18 Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get the party started. I'm going to hit my 18th movie. And uh, for me, it's this is a no-brainer. It is the only MCU movie I don't like, and that's Iron Man 3. Probably universally would be number 18. I mean, I would say probably on 75% of people's lists at least. Um, any, any, any particular reason why it's so low for you? You know, right out of the gate, the souring of just the, the Mandarin ordeal. You know, yeah. I mean, I was such a fan of that villain growing up that, uh, and you know, when you talk about, you know, the main villain to the main hero, you know, we're, uh, you know, his arch enemy, if you will, it was Mandarin for Iron Man. Yeah. That's the way I always thought. I, I call this clutching, clutching defeat from the jaws of victory. Because they, they took the Mandarin, who would have been a real problematic character because of the racial stereotypes. They actually figured out how to modernize him, sidestep all those, all those um, civil, all the civil landmines. And then they just crapped the bed with that Killian and we went from a really interesting, compelling villain to a completely boring, worthless villain with random powers. Especially, you have Ben Kingsley. Yeah. And he was perfect. He was great. He was Wh perfect. Waylon? You know, the, again, you know, the Mandarin thing bothered me. And also, just the, the script and the pacing was all over the place. I kept waiting for yeah. it to become a superhero movie. Iron Man movie without Iron Man for about 40 minutes. Yeah, it just dragged. And then the la and then the final I've actually never seen the end of it. I sh I shut it off cuz I was done. But what I remember is 50 Iron Man suits that that Oh yeah, cameos. Disco Disco Iron Man. Yeah. I think he's marked 27. Part. He's purple and orange. Yeah. Uh, worst um, Marvel Legends figure by the way as well. So, yeah. so we agree on 18. Um, so oh, also too, just one more quick note. Yep. Totally wasted aim. Yeah. Another thing. Totally. Aim could have had MODOK, could have had the, the head aim. Who they call that? The grand scientist? Was that the... The, the, the scientist head? supreme. Scientist supreme. None of that was even just some guy's just worthless, petty revenge on Tony Stark. Bullshit. And he was the guy with aim. Didn't make any sense. I think, I think at that time they couldn't have done MODOK. But you can sure. you could get away with Modoc now. But my I God, know. yeah, I mean, you already were like for what it was, you were already dealing with, yeah. you know, Mandarin. So just meh. So number seventeen. What do you, what do you have? Seventeen, for 17? is is again. I think it's pretty universal. Thor, you know, uh, two Dark yeah, World. Yeah, yeah, Thor the Dark World. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Malachek again. Uh, the villains. Just not not a good history of villains in the first two phases, especially. Uh, yeah, I just never cared for Malachek anyway. Yeah. And just the way this movie contrasts with now the both of the Thors, the one before and the one after. I don't know. It it just it took itself too serious. I saw I saw Thor: Dark World in the theater first run, and a year later when I was buying everything on Blu-ray. I couldn't remember if I had seen it or not. Nah. I'm like, man, I, I, I know it was in the theater. Could you even remember that his mom died or any of that about it? No, I just saw it two weeks ago again, and it is painful. It is so painful. And the Natalie Bartman stuff wasn't really good. None of it. Just, yeah. oh. It was... Waylon? My thoughts, the thing that bugged me the most about the Dark World was how Asgard, the Dark Elves, everything was portrayed science fiction-y. Like, they consciously made a production choice to to downplay the fantasy and the magical elements. And I, that just always rubbed me the wrong way. Which is reflected from the way they had retconned in the comic books. Yeah, that, at, at that point just, in yeah. the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they were looking to kind of take a consciously more science fiction I, direction. I think, I, think, I think they had to do that because, so remember when Thor came out, Kenneth Branagh is directing it. And you had how do you do a movie? How do you introduce an audience to a movie with Norse gods in it? Mm -hmm. So they, they made a pretty smart choice in Thor to make it okay, these aren't gods, they're aliens. Mm -hmm. And then Thor the Dark World was stuck with that legacy. And it really wasn't until we, we got to uh, Thor Ragnarok mm -hmm. where Taiga Waititi said, No, we're going full on camp. And in Doctor Strange as well, they, they yeah. kind of made a conscious decision to reverse course 
and yeah. make magic more an explicit part of the Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think I think we're all in agreement on 17. 17 is the dark world. Mm -hmm. um, brings us up to 18. And to be honest, 16. I don't, 16. We're going backwards. I don't remember. I don't know if this is... This is when we start getting into good movies, but not great, at least for me. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if this was the Hulk or the Incredible Hulk. This is the Incredible this Hulk. Is the yeah, Incredible this is the Hulk. Edward Norton. Lee was this, Hulk. Yeah, yeah. This right. is the Edward Norton movie. And this, this is a perfectly serviceable movie. It is, it is just fine. It's, we've, we've definitely a leap, leaps above the dark world. Um, but for me, it's, it's number 16 because everything else was better. Any, yeah. uh, Jason, any thoughts on Hulk? Uh, I liked Hulk probably a little bit more, higher than that. Um, I thought I thought they were all good performances in the movie, definitely. And uh, you know, Abomination was a strong villain. The guy that played him, Tim Roth, was a strong actor. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it was it was very very good for me. I, I didn't walk out of it wanting more at the time. I mean, now I, I would probably want a lot more from it. But you know, at the time when it came out. It was, you know, I, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I was looking forward to a sequel. It never happened. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say about, you, you know, um, Abomination as the villain, mm -hmm. this kind of this kind of solidified the MCU trope of the villain is just evil mirror image of the hero. You know, we got it with Iron Man and, and Warmonger. But Hulk is saturated in that. A lot yeah. of gamma radiated villains. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's it's, it's kind of like that. Like when you watch the the Flash, uh, everybody got their powers from like the same accident. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Which is one of the reasons I don't watch the Flash. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we don't need to go into it. Um, Waylon. Uh, you know it it. It, said, it seemed like they were getting one step closer to nailing the Hulk. Like, uh, still a little bit off the mark, but getting closer. Like, yeah. it looks like an evolution in the step to where the Hulk is currently. And I can and kind of appreciate it. it. And they're killing it. Yeah, and the pacing was great in that movie. It got yeah. right to it. It yeah. felt like a comic book movie. I remember enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, the origin was in the I love, credits. Yeah. yeah, there was no time wasted with that. I, I appreciate how they kind of almost made it a sequel to Ang Lee's The Hulk, mm -hmm. but you didn't need Ang Lee's The Hulk to see it. But it, the two movies kind of flowed together, but but they didn't. You could play it either way. Yeah. It's like it was kind of almost like a, a soft sequel. Yeah. Now, this is the one movie in the MCU that was actually done by Universal. Hmm. So, um, which is why we don't have a Hulk sequel, but... Um, and Hollywood wasn't afraid to use the name Bruce. Yeah. Because you know the old story behind the TV show, don't you? No. They changed his name to David Banner because they thought Bruce was too gay. Huh. There you go. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, number 15. So for me, and I think this movie gets a bad rap. A lot of people bash it. But Iron Man 2, I think, I, again, it's, it's number 15 because everything else is better. But Iron Man 2 was, it was a fun movie. It was a good ride. Iron Man 2, the secondary villain, Whiplash, a guy that probably should just be in an ensemble type of, you know, villain like, like with Whirlwind and some of the other Morts, you know, or whatever. He was never a strong enough villain for me to see as a lead villain in a movie. I kind of felt like Iron Man 2 should have had Mandarin. You know, and or Crimson Dynamo, or or even uh, Titanium Man, uh, Whiplash. Mickey Rourke was great. He was coming off the wrestler. He was, yeah. you Mickey. know, that second wind of his that he had. This but our, uh, our introduction of Black Widow. Uh, well, that could have been in any movie. Well, it could have been, but, but it was in Iron Man too. It was in Iron Man too. So and I, I guess think, that's its saving grace. And I think, that, <laughs> I think that's where I think that's where Iron Man two gets a lot of flack is because of how much of it was setting up the MCU. Mm. But for people that don't like that, you have a whole, you have 80 years of Hollywood movies that are standalone movies. The MCU isn't that thing. It is, it is a connected, it's a, it's a really high budget, well-made TV show. So the, the movies are going to interconnect. That's why we like them. Um, I want my bird. And Iron Man pissing <laughs> in his suit. What, when, what stands out for you? You know, uh, Iron Man 2, I, I almost felt like he was underused, but I really liked 
Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer. He had that kind of that oily, smarmy thing going on that I kind of felt like didn't get used enough. I would have liked to have seen him in more movies, yeah. just like that actor. Uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of similar in Charlie's Angels. Uh, this is one of those times where, where MCU gets knocked for not having good villains, but they are. They, they take a back seat to the hero, mm. but Justin Hammer was a really cool villain. You know, mm -hmm. I think what they're doing is, is they're casting these like lower tier villains really well. Yeah. But they're still being outshined because they're lower tail right. villains. Right. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's one of the secrets for the MCU. The, it's about the heroes. It's about the characters that we're going to be with movie after movie after movie. I don't want to see Justin Hammer in eight movies. No. No, I get you. You know, whereas Iron Man, how many is this now? For, we'll, anyway. Yeah, I didn't. Too many. I didn't. I enjoyed the movie, but I, it's not one that I've ever felt the need to really revisit. It's not one I pop on. Yeah. If you're a completist. Yeah. If, for me, I'm going through and I'm watching them all again. Except for Iron Man 3, I refuse to watch that again. <laughs> but Iron Man 2, it's a perfectly serviceable movie. Um, and next up, we, we've kind of talked about it a little bit later, earlier. Um, number 14, at least for me, was the first Thor. Um, Jason, is, do, you, uh, do you guys agree number 14, too high, too The low? first Thor uh, had, had some, some good dialogue, some good banter. But it just, uh, it was, it was, it was really a small movie compared yeah. to a lot of the others. Yeah. You know? So it was kind of like, It uh, was a good introduction to Thor and Loki and, and yeah. that whole world. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. I mean, uh, the Destroyer, that was, that was a good choice out of nowhere. It was nowhere. a great choice, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and uh, he looked, like, you go back and look at the comic, they nailed it. It looks exactly oh, like yeah, the Destroyer. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly like it. And from yeah. the comic Yeah, it book. does. Yeah. It looks like, like a piece of curvy I thought, art yeah, life. Thor... Getting accustomed to, uh, you know, blending in to, you know, uh, you know the way he would act at the restaurant. Yeah, the fish out of water. Throwing the the glass down and, and Chris, all that Chris stuff. Hemsworth. What what did uh, who who is the produ the director of Ghostbusters? Anyways, yeah, that that movie. But he said, you know, God rarely gives gives with both hands, but he did when he made Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> That dude is so funny. Yeah, he is definitely. <laughs> he was I, good in Ghostbusters. Guy. I always wanted Triple H to play Thor, but oh. Chris Hemsworth was the. We're, right we're going back to the to the uh, what what is it the wizard the wizard casting, casting? Yeah. when uh, Danzig was the perfect Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. Still is, still is. I still say Danzig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait, where, where do you put Thor? Is it Thor? Is this? You Thor? know, you know, I probably rank it right about here. I remember right. I enjoyed it. Uh, again, this isn't a movie that I that I revisit a lot. Definitely didn't have any problem with it. Walked out of the theater feeling like I got my money's worth. Uh, but again, I like Thor got better as the films progressed. Like I think Chris Hemsworth really got a handle on it after a, a, getting a few movies in that role under his belt. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I don't have any problem at all with that ranking. And, and, and we had the introduction of Hawkeye in that. So again, just a little nugget. Uh, one of the things that the MCU movies did well early was they focused on one character, but they just give you snippets and shadows of what was to come. Guest appearances, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it was great. And no, so at number 15, I've got Ant-Man. Um, Jason? Yeah, Ant-Man was uh, kind of... Uh... Uh, you, you could... Ant-Man's the one movie of this arc... Of, of all of them that you could really just take on its own and you don't need anything else. No, I don't... And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily whatever that is, but I just, like, Ant-Man's kind of like, when I think about rewatching all the movies, that's the one I forget about the most. It's... it's. But that's not a bad thing, I'm just saying. It's, yeah. It's, it was it's, so far away from the arc. You and, know, from the, and where it came in... So it, it came in at the end of Marvel... Of the Phase 2, after Age of Ultron, and it was like... Uh, a little breath of fresh air, just a little, <laughs> a, little, a little, a little, a little comedy, a little left field. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I know. So, Waylon, you, you put this one higher. You right? know, I just remember like walking into this movie with such low expectations, and walking out just feeling like that's a that's as good an Ant Man movie as anybody could possibly <laughs> ask for. Yeah. You know, for good or real. That's that's a good way to put it. Yeah. You, there, there was no other way to make that movie. You know, uh, I, you know, I liked the comedy. That that movie just clicks, and I think the fact that the stakes are so 
low relatively in that movie helps that movie. It does, yeah. Um, one of the problems with comics in general is they have to keep raising the stakes and raising the powers until it gets to a point where it's all meaningless. There's 35 Omega level mutants that could all destroy the entire universe. With There's a big event every year now, and you need those. You need those smaller stories to kind of recenter you, and that's that's what Ant Man did. Following, following Age of Ultron. Well, that you heard about the production problems with Edgar Wright leaving. Everybody yeah. was just, everybody was just, had no faith that this movie was going to be anything good or that it was just going to be a, a piece of crap. But I, I just, I, honestly, if I were ranking this one, I'd probably rank it a few spots higher. It's a movie that I've watched a few times. I do enjoy. It. That's why he's the guest. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but and so I think I think for me we're getting into the next the next few movies are um, anywhere else these would be like the the five best movies in that in that uh, line or that that uh, um, I think well movies like you know, these the Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant Man and Doctor Strange being so good and now Black Panther. I think that's just giving people so much good faith yeah. in going to these films, even yeah, if it's a character they don't know flipping. anything about. Mm-hmm. At this point, they can make a Howard the Duck movie good, <laughs> and people will go to it. I, At I, this point, they can make a how, raw head, a raw, raw head kid movie, how, right? And it would it'd be good who, if it was written well. Who people. was the Who was the dog? Mm-hmm. Apollo. Apollo. Apollo the dog. No, right. Cosmo. Cosmo, 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 Cosmo the dog. The dog. Okay. Well, he was in the end of Guardians there, yeah. so he's already been in a movie. How great would it be to have a flipping movie with Cosmo and Howard the Duck? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that'd be awesome. I'm and, there. And, and people would be like, yeah, that's... I don't know why they didn't make that ten years ago. <laughs> MCU is just going... So, I, we've got Ant, I've got Ant-Man as the 13th best movie in the MCU. It is by far better than anything in the DCEU. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not... Yeah. Ooh, Wonder Woman. 13, and now we're going to move on to uh, one of the highest grossing movies in the MCU at number 12, Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, another movie that gets a lot of unfair criticism for, for, for the universe building. I, I, I thought it makes me sad that I have to rank it this low. This had one of the best villains um, and just one of the most momentous stories, one of the most impactful stories, and really, yeah, yeah. really hammered home the character arc of Tony Stark. And, and James Spader really voiced Ultron well. Yeah, it was it really was great. Really had, had the mood, and, and, and you what, know, what, uh, what's, the, what's the song he sings? Oh, it, it's from well because it's Disney. It's the Pinocchio yeah, one. I have no strings. Have no you strings. know, yeah. I thought that was a really good addition right there. Yeah. Oh, also too, we talked about this like a little while earlier. Best Stanley cameo. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Stanley Excelsior. Yeah. So it, <laughs> this movie did more to develop the characters than probably any of the other than Civil War or. or yeah, I mean, we got the to Russian we were introduced uh, to Scarlet Witch and Vision. Scarlet Witch, Scarlet you know, Witch, Vision, Quicksilver. Well, I mean, introduced yeah. to and lost, lost in the right. same movie because of what X Men was doing with the gang. Um, the farm scene. And, and I, I'm blanking on who directed the Avengers movies. Just did Justice League. Well, we're going to have the directors uh, remember. The second one was also Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon, yeah. yeah. So, sorry, Joss Whedon directed and he fought to keep the farm scene. You he know, want, he were like, you humanized and you really... Well, because Hawkeye wasn't really getting love, right? right. <laughs> I love that scene because, you know... Everybody hates on Hawkeye, but I really like Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye. I, I love Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye. And that that scene was pivotal. Well, not only that, but it reminded you that there's a real world, you know, yeah. real world that they're trying to protect, yeah. which is which is one of the big themes of the of Age of Ultron was starting to show the impact of what they're doing to the real person. It it set up so war. It told its own story. And it set up phase three. And it also yeah. served as a reminder that the that as powerful as these characters are, they they're vulnerable. They're vulnerable. Hawk, I love I love the scene when Hawkeye is trying to uh, um, trying to get uh, um, Scarlet Witch. I'm blanking on her name. Elizabeth Wanda, Olsen. No, the, the character Wanda. Wanda, Wanda. Wanda Maximoff. Yeah, he's trying to get Wanda. He's trying to get Wanda to come out of her shell and fight. And he's like, look. I'm a dude with a bow and arrow, 
fighting an army of robots. None of this makes sense. And I'm like, you're right. None of this makes sense. It was one of the best but lines I'm, in the movie, I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm, to I'm totally with you, man. At that, at that was the moment where we just accepted anything the MCU the absurdity of it all also, they, they, it's part of what makes it yeah. work they, they, they always say with, with, with an ensemble with a group with like that you always want that one character that's relatable to the audience yeah and Hawkeye's that guy that you can relate to as another hey it's like that's that's Hawk, what I would be fighting Hawkeye for and Hawkeye and Black Widow right because I mean you've got people like what's a god he fights for you know, right. the, a lot of these heroes what they fight for the scale is so just um, you know, it's yeah. it, it's at a, another level, but but you got people like Hawkeye. And it's a day job for him. He's just he's fighting for his family. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. fighting, you know, just to, to protect yeah. what he loves. So, um, any any other thoughts? There's so much packed into Age of Ultron. The but, opening sequence where they're raiding the oh. Hydra base is just so great. It is um, Captain America's motorcycle, uh, the Thul Th the Thulk, Thor smashing tanks. Yeah, um, Baron Strucker bailing on his soldiers the minute yeah. the going gets rough. Yeah, just a just a great, just a great movie. A lot of unfair criticism, but um, again, it, it on almost any other movie list, it would be it'd be in the top. The two. only thing I could say is maybe a tighter edit. I mean, that you could probably trim a little bit here and there, but not as bad as people make out. And it's and we got Claw. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was our, Claw, another piece of great casting. Yeah, and that, we're going to talk a little bit more about him later on, but um, anyways, moving on, and I think now we're at uh, a Phase 3 movie, uh, number, what is it, number 11 on our list, or at least on my list, and now we're at Doctor Strange. Doctor so, Strange, alright, before we say anything good about this movie, can we just talk about the dishwashing lives this guy wears? <laughs> <laughs> and they're too yellow and rubbery looking for me. Anyway, right. stupid gripe, not even <clears throat> worth complaining about, I know, but anyway. <laughs> so, Doctor Strange, um, this is, this just came out a year ago, a little over a year ago. Yeah. And just the visuals of this movie. Yeah, yeah, good times on acid. Yeah, <laughs> man, I... I, would, I wish this had been come out in the mid '90s. I would have had a completely different viewing experience for me. Uh, but would have jo dropped some Barry, Jerry the Garcia. Visuals, yeah, man. Again, one one thing that the MCU has done that say the DCU shied away from the X Men movies. They went full on. We are a comic book franchise, and this was uh, was it. Ditko was the artist for for mm -hmm. Doctor Strange. He was the one that was known for the really psychedelic art. Yeah. Yeah. This was this was Steve Ditko's artwork come to life. It was crazy. Um, another, I just watched it again, and one thing I noticed: Doctor Strange, Stephen Strange, stays in character and never kills anybody. Oh, one of the things yeah. he was adamant about was, "I'm a doctor. I do not. I'm not a fighter. I'm a doctor. I heal people. And I don't hurt them." Doesn't he, he kill never, one guy accidentally, and he's agonized about it? One of the one of uh, in the hospital scene. Yeah, you're right. You're mm -hmm. right. He never intended, but and at the you're right. But at the end, rather than kill them, he figured out rather. So the typical superhero fight, punch, punch, kick, kick. Somebody goes to jail, or somebody dies. This was a completely Doctor Strange way of solving the problem. Um, and it was just brilliant. You know, there's no way you could have seen it coming. And it, it had to do with his character, his intellect, his problem solving, and his values. It, he didn't have to kill the bad guy. It was well thought out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, a, just a brilliant, brilliant ending. Um, the cape was great. The cape was great. The cape was the best character in the movie. <laughs> Uh, for me, the visuals, the, the, the look of Dormammu blow me, blew me away. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. that looked really great. Um, again, yeah, just a, just a really cool... Is it Dormammu or Dormammu? Tomato, tomato. Yeah. Um, Jason, any other thoughts on, on Strange? Not really. I mean, again, it's an experience. More than... You know what? Uh, 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 one of the better big screen. One of the, know, one of the, of the weaker villains. 
So they, they cast Mads Mikkelsen. Again, Mikkelson. he's Marvel, you know. They cast Mads Mikkelsen, but he was just, he was as worthless as Killian in, in Iron Man 3. Oh, yeah. Didn't do much for me either. Yeah. yeah. Probably probably the only legitimate knock on the movie. Another was. just, the another just pitch perfect casting, though. Yeah. In Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. I think, more, I don't think the movie would work for me nearly as well with anybody else in that role. Better than the 79 pilot? I don't know about that though. Commercial free? 